community of faith here at the Girl Heights Presbyterian Church. The mighty one, God, the Lord speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to the place where it sets. From Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and will not be silent. A fire devours before him and around him tempest rages. Gather to me my consecrated ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice and the heavens proclaim his righteousness for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against you. I am God, your God. I do not rebuke you for your sacrifices or your burnt offerings, which are ever before me. I have no need of a bull from your stall or of goats from your pens. For every animal of the forest is mine. The cattle of a thousand hills, I know every bird in the mountains and the creatures of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all that is in it. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats, sacrifice the offerings to God, fulfill your vows to the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver you and you will honor me. Amen. 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 The word of God for the people of God. Holy God, our Father, we gather here today on the 21st day of November 2021 in the year of our Lord to celebrate you and to acknowledge your sovereignty, to express our gratitude for our blessings, all of which have come from your hand, to declare that this is the day that you have made and we are rejoicing and we are glad to be in it, to know that we belong to you and that you have paid the ultimate sacrifice for the redemption of our very souls. We gather here today, almighty God, in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior. There's no other name given unto us by which we can be saved. We humble ourselves before you. We testify that you and you alone are God. There's only one of you. We dare not bow down to another. We live and move and have our being because you have ordained it. And on this day, we begin our worship by celebrating your love, your unfailing commitment to us. Even when we stumble, you reach down from the very heights of heaven to the very depths of hell to lift us again so that we can walk in the light of our salvation. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for who you are and for allowing us to be called your children. Oh, what a privilege to be known as a child of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. I will attempt to sing it. We'll do the, the first and the fourth verses. All hail the power of Jesus' Name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Oh, that with yonder sacred throng we at his feet may fall. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. 
will join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. Amen. Every Sunday we have the privilege of reciting the tenets of our faith as found in the Apostles' Creed. Let us all say it together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell and The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Are there any announcements today? Please unmute yourselves and we can hear the announcements. Are there any announcements today? I want to just say for those who were not able to attend yesterday's going home celebration for Brother Willie Davis, it was a, a wonderful. It was a wonderful tribute to his life, and to his contribution to the Greenhouse community and the hundreds, perhaps thousands, of individuals whom he had helped during his lifetime. He lived the kind of life I I was very proud of, and the kind of life that Christians should be living everywhere. He lived well himself, but he tried to make sure that others also had opportunity to live well. Is a blessing to students, even to their parents. But what a wonderful celebration we had yesterday for his life. And so today we remember him. I did not have the privilege of knowing him personally, but I felt like I knew him by listening to, to some of the testimony and the, the vignettes attributed to his life. What a wonderful legacy he left all of us in the Greer Heights community and within his family. Oh, I, do have, I have an announcement from the Gleaning Ministry. Uh, the St. Andrew Society has sent um, Advent devotionals, so you can pick them up at the church, or I'll have them in the car at any time. Thank you. For, and it's enough for everyone. We have 100. You can share with someone else also. God bless you. Thank you, Jeanette. Are there others? This, <clears throat> this coming um, Thursday, of course, is Thanksgiving, and we trust that all of you will have an opportunity to share that time of giving thanks with your family members and perhaps friends and others. Of course, every day is Thanksgiving Day. We know that. But I'm glad that we as a country, we set aside one particular day in the year where we come together to remember specifically the blessings we have inherited from our Creator. Enjoy all that turkey, collard greens, cornbread, black eyed peas. Oh, goodness I gracious. <laughs> I do have an announcement, Pastor Togo. <clears throat> it's a very quick and short one, but we're so thankful. The nominating committee of, of the church are so thankful for all of those who have stepped up to the plate, those who considered, and it's not, yes, absolutely. Uh, we will be reporting to session within the next session meeting. And again, thank you all who have decided to become a deacon, um, um, elder, and trustee. Thank you so much. And we know that you're going to be in a glorious place and we're going to support <laughs> you 101%. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Okay. We'll move on to our offering. Right. Let's now pass the Lord's peace. Let's pass the Lord's peace now one to the other. May the Lord's peace be with you. And also with you.
Mm -hmm. And also with you, blessings and peace. Mm -hmm. May the Lord's peace be with all of you. And also with you. And also, also with you. Also with you. Also with you. Also with you. And also with you. May, may the good hand of the Lord rest upon all of us now and forever. All right. Hey, oh, holders. Yes. Hey. Good morning. Good morning, good morning Bill. Good morning. How you doing, Bill? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning dear family. Good morning. Good morning, good morning brother. Good morning, brother. Good morning. Good morning, church family. Blessings to you all. Good morning, Good morning Jennifer. Jennifer. Hi, is Mizell there? Hi, anyway. No, he's not here, but I'll tell him hello. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The men did a great job singing yesterday. We enjoy them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Stacy. Good morning, Stacy. Good morning, Stacy. Is it Sunday school today, Stacy? Yes, it yes. is um, at 11 30. Yeah. <laughs> 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 very good thank you all let us now go to our offering and let's thank god for our gifts the monetary support we have received from the members and partners and friends of your heights presbyterian church let's bow our heads we are reminded heavenly father every day of two things that stand out particularly in our journey First thing we're reminded of when we wake up in the morning, that we're blessed. Amen. We're blessed in innumerable ways. We cannot begin to count all the ways in which we are. Secondly, we are reminded that we are instructed by your holy word to share our blessings with others, however and whenever we can. And so the gifts that have come into this ministry from our members and from the friends and partners of the Gerheids Presbyterian Church Ministry. We thank you for these gifts. We thank you, Lord, for their prayers. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for their participation, volunteering their services and their talents to promote the love of Christ in our community and among those who are the least, the lost, and the left behind. Yes. We praise your name. And we say, Lord, to you, may we always be able to do your work and serving your kingdom on earth. Whatever we're doing, may we do it in ways that are pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. This is the time now for our communal prayer, our community and congregation prayer. Please, cause, please, please call out the name of individuals and circumstances for which you are asking prayer. Al McLaughlin, Monica Taft, Dorian Taft. All the families that's getting together within the next week and all the safe, for safe travels for all. Kadana and the Reed Davis family. Amen. Luther Benson, he's uh, got cancer and he's uh, real, real sick. They called in hospitals on him. Did y'all hear me? Yes. 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 Aaron Roxborough and family. Hello, Ty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to play for Tanisha. Goodman, the sister of uh, Phil Goodman and a, a brother of ours in, uh, in New York. She had major liver transplant surgery this past week, and uh, it's going well so far. We praise God for that. Phil Malone. Let's pray for Phil Malone. He had a little bit of a setback, mm -hmm. and uh, he's recovering. 
He had emergency surgery this week. We pray for him. Carolyn um, Williams. Vivian Matheson, who had cataract surgery this week. Gwen yeah. Atkinson and her children and her family. Charlotte oh, Mutton, her school system and their families and parents and teachers and everybody. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Williams. Altavia Pope. The homeless and less fortunate. Yeah, the Uptown Men's Shelter. Traveling mercies for the, the Ian Sanders family. Tavares Hammond. Greer High Street family. And community. I said uh, the Fant family, family uh, and wow. Derek Fant, he's getting married today. Blessings on them. Amen. Amen. Hey, Dennis folks, Phyllis lost her brother yesterday. I want to pray for the for justice in the Aubrey uh, case in Atlanta and uh, Georgia. Uh, we continue to see and need the need to have uh, God intervene in the hearts of our judicial system Amen. that so riddled with overtones of racial bias. Yes. Aubrey, Aubrey Lewis deserves justice and we pray that justice will prevail. Pray for all the ones that are thankful for this Thanksgiving season. And I would like to um, have a special prayer for, and I know it's a distant country, um, the small island of Madagascar um, while we're enjoying our Thanksgiving this um, week I would just like to be in the prayer for that small island if you're familiar with the island of Madagascar if not yeah. I've learned a lot about that small island it's between yeah. Africa and India yeah. so I would just like to have a special prayer for them as well thank you for that amen Speaking of foreign brothers and sisters, let's keep in mind our brothers and sisters in Haiti who are yeah. living still under the most oppressive <laughs> poverty you can ever imagine. It's an incredible sense. And uh, our brothers and sisters in Latin America, South America, who are living in dangerous situations. And all they want, the same thing that we want, is the right to live and to survive. Let's keep Let's keep, for in prayer. Let's keep in prayer uh, the Willie Davis family. Amen. I, I'd like to say a special prayer also for a Griff Funeral Service employees and all funeral home employees mm -hmm. in these trying times. Yeah. Yes. And the men and women on the front line, scientists, doctors, and nurses. Thank you. Yes, Joy, Joy Emanuel and her company. Amen. Pray for a brother of mine who's having, he's living with a situation that uh, needs prayer with his wife is ill. And so we pray for her as well. Let's bow our heads. We live in an age by studying anger and its power, we can learn self-control so that we do not need to lose our temper in rage or abuse ourselves with resentment, but can diffuse anger by resolving to live by certain principles. And among those principles are these to keep our life centered on God as best we can, recognizing that 
when we do not, our natural self will generate things to become angry about. Two, to not condemn ourselves for feelings of anger. Three, to do everything we can to avoid acting on the basis of anger. And four, to clean up any problems that we create as quickly as possible. And five, to recognize God's help in this process. And six, to redirect the energy of anger away from hurting people and toward improving conditions for people. And finally, to be sensitive to injustice and evil, learning to be angry about the misery that sin inflicts on people without becoming controlled by the anger. If we can focus on who we are as disciples of Christ, it's a difficult tight rope to walk. It's like walking in the rain without getting wet. We're supposed to be angry at things that are wrong. We are supposed to be angry at injustice. We should fight racial prejudice. We should fight hatred without being pulled into hating the hater. It's a difficult line we have to walk. So we never let our guard down. So we stand up boldly and loudly for justice and for love and for compassion and for hope. That's why we pray what we pray for those in high office to be sensitive to those who are the least among us and not to be overly concerned about those who have the most in our society. Heavenly Father, we, we are praying today for all the names that were raised this morning that have been circulated among us to hear. We pray for each name. We pray that you will be the healing agent in their bodies and in their circumstance. Because quite frankly, Heavenly Father, we can't do what you can. We can't go where you are. We cannot be in Madagascar or in Haiti or in Latin America. We cannot be in the inner cities across this country, even across the world, that need the benefit of what only you can bring to heal and to solve and to bring remedy to those horrific conditions. But in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for healing in the bodies of all those who are ailing. And we pray for health and for recovery and for restoration of health. We pray in Jesus' name, O oh Lord, for sharing of resources among nations, those wealthy nations who would be more willing to share what they have among those nations that have next to nothing. We have enough resource in this universe and then on this planet Earth for every mouth to be fed and everybody to be sheltered. And so we are crying out from the depths of our hearts, Lord, for justice in our planet that wealthier nations will respond more to the nations who have little or next to nothing. But may we, oh Lord, in our own particular and individual sojourn, do all within our concentric circles to respond to those that we know, that we meet, that we touch, that we see, that we can be instruments of healing and help when someone falls within our community, help us to reach down and to reach out and to help them stand again. And when they falter, may we be gentle reminders and giving them words of wisdom to guide them, help guide them through life. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for this wonderful and marvelous ministry at the Greer Heights Presbyterian Church and all that we attempt to do in the name of your son. And we pray that we'll be tireless and fearless in trying to demonstrate and manifest the love of Jesus where we are. May people who know us, know us also that we are disciples of you, that we are followers of the Christ. We bow down and we humble ourselves before his teachings and we submit to his authority. 
We thank you, Lord, for the privilege and for the right to be called your children in your kingdom and in your service. May we be also determined to bring others to Christ so that our numbers can expand, that we can bring others to the body of Christ by what we say and how we say it and what we do. May we never lose sight of our responsibility to bring someone to Christ Jesus. Now, Lord, bless this moment. And now as we turn to the word today, may the word be preached with sincerity and power and persuasion and lift it up in Jesus' name and for his sake do we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Okay, thank you, my brothers and sisters. We now turn our attention to the word of the day. The sermon of the hour.
morning. God bless you all. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, David. Thank you, John. November 21st, can you believe? Four days from now, we'll be sitting around our tables with our family and maybe some friends eating all of that wonderful cooking. I look forward to Thanksgiving. One of my favorite meals uh, of the year, of course, you can tell I eat a lot of favorite meals. But that one is going to be special. But welcome to the Girl Heights Presbyterian Church Sunday morning worship here on this thank pre-Thanksgiving Sunday. Amen. It's so good to welcome you here and to be with our family and our members and our partners and friends at the Girl Heights Presbyterian Church. Thank you for your gifts, your support, your prayers, all of that matters, and we're all grateful for what you are doing with us and how we are working together to promote the kingdom of God. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Holy God, our Father in heaven, it is a joy and a pleasure to wake up this morning on this pre-Thanksgiving Sunday, acknowledging you as the source of all that we have. We come now to this moment when we have an opportunity to consult your word and to be bathed in its instruction, to be guided by its truths, and to be sustained by its power. I ask that you will enable me to preach this word with clarity and persuasion and power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have been moved by a particular verse in Proverbs, which I'll get to in just a moment. But I begin with a question that I want to ask all of you, and I ask it particularly of myself. And the question is, what is the legacy I want to leave behind? What is the summation of my life, is my life a contribution to the gifts of God that I have been blessed to receive? And today I want us to focus on this verse in Proverbs 13, verse 22. It says, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. My goodness. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. You know, I've been involved in leadership virtually all of my adult life. And uh, having pastored, of course, as you all know by now, uh, over 46 years altogether. And uh, I've been in leadership roles in almost everything I've been a part of, whether it was in the college or running not-for-profit corporations. Uh, and I've learned something about leadership. I want to make a distinction today between uh, a covering and a lid. A covering and a lid. A lid is great because it protects what is contained under it. And you put a lid on jam or peanut butter or your preserves. You want to protect the, the content of the jar. But a covering is more than just a lid. A, a covering, you see, it, it, it allows for growth and allows for expansion, allows for intervention, for, 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 for invention. So leaders, that's what all of us are in some way. If you're a mother, you're a leader. If you're a father, you're a leader. I happen to wear the title of pastor, but I don't have to have that title to be a leader of my children. I'm their father. But everyone, to some extent, is a leader. But I, what kind of leader are you? Are you a lid or are you providing a covering? So today I want to talk about leaving a legacy. Leaving a legacy. So I begin with the question, where is Jesus in you? That's the first question I want to ask. And does anybody know that Jesus is in you? Where is he? How is he seen? When does he show up? And how does he show up? 
One thing I know about my Lord Jesus Christ and the Word is Jesus and the Word is one. So if you want to find out more about who Jesus is and what he is, I urge you to get into the Word. Study it. And you'll find that Jesus and the Word are, in fact, one. You'll grow from that knowledge. You'll grow in your experience of living out your life as a disciple of Christ. I want to say to everybody here this morning, and particularly the young people, our sons and our daughters, legacy doesn't start when you're old. Some folk may think that. Oh, legacy starts when I'm 50, 60, 70 years old. That's the wrong thinking. It starts when you're young. When you're 20, 25, 30 years old, you're planting and plotting your legacy for those coming after you. It starts when you're young. Legacy has to do with the way of thinking. It informs, it shapes your attitudes and your choices and becomes uh, who you are. It's about being a part of something greater than you are. Understanding your life didn't start with you. It starts with something far bigger than where you started. So the verse says in Proverbs 13, 22, it says, uh, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. I want you to note what it says. It's not looking for a perfect man. Oh, that's important to note. God is not identifying a perfect man, but a, a good man. A good man is not a perfect man. But a good man is one who is quick to repent. A good man is one who is quick to forgive. A good man is teachable. I run into, into so many people in my lifetime who are just not teachable. Their arrogance and their pride and their self-importance stood in the way of them becoming a good man. You couldn't teach that person anything because they knew it all already or the attitude would not allow them to experience anything new. No, but to be a good man is someone who was in touch with his or her higher self and then determined to live out that higher self in a, in a consistent way. One of the barriers to living a legacy is that so often we intend to do good and then we become inconsistent in our expression of it. Bad ideas and bad habits Temptation step in, in front of us. And next thing you know, through living a, a, a life of a good person, we live a life that is inconsistent. A good man is one who wants to know where is God. A good man is searching for God. What does it mean to be human? Ah, what does it mean to live in this world? We get so caught up in identifying ourselves by race, but I want to say to us this morning, identity about who we are is not bound up in our race or in our ethnicity or in our culture or in our money or in our jobs or in our education. We discover who we are, listen please, from the moment of our conception. The moment you are conceived, you are conceived and molded in the image of God. So the question is, how are we living out that lineage? Then, you see, when we live with that knowledge, everything we do is designed to promote who we are. Then the lives take on that image, takes on the responsibility for that life. Our choices and our attitude are conforming to who we are in Christ, in our creation. Jesus Christ coming into your life should be manifested in everything you do and say. We should not try to hide the fact that we are who we are. See, legacy is not about materialism. It's not about homes or it's not about money. It isn't about, about, uh, uh, about money and wealth. It isn't about land. No, legacy starts with spirituality. That's what you want to leave behind. Legacy is what you intend to leave for those coming after you. It's a spirit, spirituality is the most important thing you'll ever bring or leave for those behind you. I'm talking about 
Live your life in such a way that your children will not reject your faith. One of the constant pressures of today is many of our, us as parents or grandparents, we are Christian, we are disciples of Christ, but oftentimes our children want nothing at all to do with our faith or our journey or the way we live or how we talk. But to live a life in such a way that our children would want to embrace our faith, to want to embrace and not reject who we are and what we believe in. To live a legacy in such a way they say, you know what, Mama, Grandpa, I want to live like you. I, I want to take on your values. I, I'm watching how you go through life, and I respect that. The way you carry yourself, the way you honor truth, the way you honor dignity. That's what you're leaving behind. Legacy, you see, is both spiritual and intellectual. Listen to this. The quality of your life determines the quality of your thoughts. The quality of your thinking determines the quality of your life. The truth is we all are falling prey to all kinds of voices trying to get our attention. You know, the voices everywhere thinks, everyone thinks they know the truth. Every ideology you can think of is out there in various manifestations all believing that they are right to be a Democrat or to be a Republican or do I dare say to be a white supremacist or to be a black supremacist. All these ideas trying to get our attention and say, follow me, I know the truth. I know what is appropriate. And that's what I like about my faith and our faith. Jesus says, I'm not a truth. I am the truth. I am the truth. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we, you and I, we've adopted this posture of saying I acknowledge that I am a disciple of Christ and that I embrace the truth that he is. So the scripture says, seek you first the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. But when we say that, it's not just simply seeking something far off. Seeking God, the kingdom of God, it becomes a way of life. It becomes a way of thinking. It's our actions and our choices. It's how we press on when the odds are against us, how you carry the burdens of life. What do you do when the trials and tribulations come? Are you still seeking? When temptations fall into your lap and your eyes are glazed over with power and wealth. Do you give in to that or are you still seeking the kingdom of God? Because you're seeking, you see, you begin to pass on what you believe is something bigger than you are and you're preparing the generations yet to come who are walking in your footsteps. We pass on what we have from this generation to the generations following us. I look at my two grandchildren and the two beautiful uh, young people. And I, I, I said to my daughter, you know, uh, your, your job as a parent, among other things, and she's, she and her husband, my son-in-law, they're wonderful, wonderful parents to their children. And they give them the very best that money can buy, certainly. But they're also very good parents, teach them values and stuff. But I say to them, the most important thing you can teach your child and give your child is the gift of knowledge as to how they can get back home. I said to Regine and to Andre, you know, you're in your 30s now, but one day you'll be as old as I am. You know where I'll be, don't you? That's right, I'll be with the Lord probably by then. But I want to see my grandchildren with the Lord too. And that becomes your responsibility. As a parent, you give your, your children all the best that money can buy, all the education they can lead and need in this world to live life well. But are we giving them the information they need to live life beyond this life? And let's make, let's make no mistake about it. I'm not talking about the heaven by and by after we're gone, after we're dead. I'm talking about living a legacy now that your children can see and touch and hear 
They are embracing all that you have to give them. You see, the legacy is in part emotional. Emotional help. We can, we can inflict some serious harm, some serious damage on our sons and our daughters by not giving them the emotional support that builds self-esteem, enabling them to know for themselves that they are children of God. They're not part of the riffraff of the world. They have a foundation given to them by their mother and their father, and that they're expected to live in the bounds of that foundation. So they're strong within themselves. They're not driven by the winds of different voices and the forces telling them to do this or that when they know that that is not what their foundation is made from. They can take on all of the blame and the persecution in this world. And let's make no mistake, America continues to be a strongly racist society. But can you imagine being an African-American boy or girl growing up in a society that does not honor your blackness or your African-Americanness? Even though we are black and African-American, we have high self-esteem. We know that beyond anything else, we are children of God, no less and no better than anyone else in the universe. We pass on the legacy to our children. Nobody is better than you. Nobody is greater than you are. You are made in the image of God. Conduct your life as if you are. Live honorably among your neighbors and among your friends and your schoolmates. The legacy that we pass on is one that benefits the common good. If we live just for ourselves and ourselves only, we won't live very long, and if we did, we wouldn't live very well. We must make sure that the actions we create, the decisions that we engage in, are going to benefit, benefit us and those around us. If our decisions benefited only us, then our families will die, our churches will die, and pretty soon our communities will die as well. No, I must make sure that my children know that they are children of God. Passing on what we have accumulated, yes, materially. I want to leave my children a buck or two. I want to leave them some, something tangible to hold on to. But the legacy that is of most value is that which they cannot hold in their hands. They cannot wear on their backs or buy in the store. I want to leave them the legacy of truth and honesty. They can fall back on in times of need. I, I really want to hear my Lord say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. And that's what I believe Proverbs 13, 22 is sharing with us this morning. When the author wrote in these words, he says, a good man or a good woman leaves an inheritance for his children's children. I believe that what I believe is so powerful for me, but I also believe it's powerful for my children. And I know it's powerful for their children. I want my children to know my faith and not to be ashamed of who they are. I want to pass the legacy on to them that where Jesus is, they will rejoice. Amen. Amen. Father God in heaven, we thank you for this moment. And I pray, Lord, that those who do not know you would come to you that they will recognize that they are your children and to give their lives over to your service. There's someone here who does not know you, have not come to give their life to you. May they, through this message and through the days and the messages to come, may they say to themselves, I need to be in the care of our Lord Jesus Christ. May they set aside any hesitancy May they push out of their thinking any reason not to come and say, today I will come and give my life 
to Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of my faith, who by dying on the cross and rising again from the, from the grave has forgiven all of my sin. And I know that redemption is mine because of what he has done. Thank you, Lord, for this message. And may we leave a legacy for our children and for our grandchildren. Are we back on? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Let's open up our microphones and uh, let's have a discussion about the sermon or any comments you want to make. Anybody want to respond? I like the music. Thank you. Amen. 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 I like that too. Amen. Amen. Any other comments, observations? The sermon was good, and I like the part about leave, leaving the legacy. Uh, 
It's about spiritual and, and, and truth and honesty. Yes. Yes. And you're doing that for your kids, your grandkids, and that's what you want them to realize that you was all about. Yeah. I I, I spent that time today, uh, Elder Price, because I, I noticed a lot of times our children and grandchildren, they don't, they don't embrace the faith of their parents. And they even mm -hmm. stop going to church sometimes. And I'm wondering... Mm -hmm. That's a that's a painful thing to see. Some you know we see our we raise our children to walk in the faith of Christ, and then when they get to be grown, they stop going to church altogether, and they don't teach it to their children. And then the 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 uh, the legacy is is interrupted. It stops, but it shouldn't yeah. stop with us. We should pass it on to our children because yeah. ultimately we want to make sure that our children get into heaven too. Our grandchildren in heaven. And I want them to embrace Jesus Christ. And so we, 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 I don't want to push them away from Christ, but move them towards Christ. And we become the teacher. We become the instrument where they get to know who and what Jesus is about. And I don't want to, I want to make sure that my children are not pushed away from, uh, from Christ or from the church. And, and I totally agree on that. And uh, like my kids, well, they're grown now, my <laughs> I'll jump. I'm glad to see them in church and they are in there and doing what they can do. You know? Yeah. And, and they're living a God. I love that. Any other comments? You have done a great job, Bubba and Jeanette, for your daughters and their children. They're all engaged in the life of Christ, the life of a disciple. Of Christ, Amen. Other comments? What? Yeah. Okay. I feel like it was I, a good message, and uh, lots of time today we see a lot of people are more interested in leaving that monetary. Uh, inheritance for their children and their yeah. children. So I'm happy you brought out this sermon today. What a good yeah. man should leave for yeah. their children, not only money or property or all the material things, but just know that, like you said, we need to have the God in us that we can share with our children. And even your children, your grandchildren, but you see other members in your family not leading their children to Christ, you can do that also. You mm -hmm. can try to encourage and lift, not really just your relatives, all children. If any children that I touch, I want them to see Christ in me and Amen. want them to know mm -hmm. that there is, you know, a better way of living. The way Amen. you're living, you know, some home situations aren't the best, but you can change. You can be Amen. whoever you want to be. You trust God and have him in your life and ask him to lead and guide you. Amen. So it's very important that we know that we can do it for other kids and our own kids. We do see our kids going, you know, they have been in church and then they grow up and leave or uh, don't even have an interest in yeah. going to church. So life is not just here on earth. That's what no. we need to be leading them, letting them know. And Amen. Know that it's life after death. And Amen. you want to be with Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you all so much for today's worship moment. And next Sunday, let's invite others to join us on our worship uh, time as to celebrate the Lord in our lives and the blessings he has bestowed upon us. Uh, Pastor, before we, before yes. we leave out, I wanted to, uh, uh, on our Facebook uh, today, we had Kathy Hayes, Francis Jackson, Carolyn Singleton, Karen, Karen Sellers, uh, T. Uh, Robbie, and I missed the last name, it was Daisy, but I, there were several that I may have missed, but those are some of the ones that were on our Facebook uh, uh, church family and friends. Wonderful, thank you. Sure. And everybody